What's up, guys? My name is Marcus Huskins, and thank you for joining me. As always, if you're enjoying this content, please go ahead, do me a favor, and hit that subscribe button, and I appreciate your support. In today's video, we are going to talk about how to get your Studio One production sent over to Pro Tools in minutes. And I literally mean with everything exactly as you see it here, to have Pro Tools rebuild your entire session with everything intact, sample accurate, everything good. So we've got a song here. This isn't something that I've done. This is a production by a good friend of mine who's part of my production team here in Toronto. His name is Benjamin Barilli. Have a quick play. We can see we have a track here. We have all these different arranger sections. We have virtual instruments and we have some loops. We also have some one shots that have been laid out on the timeline. Now these one shots don't have any tempo information in them or anything like that. Uh, we also have some basically just placeholder things for ideas that are put in place that we plan to recreate later. And this is basically a really good representation of the way a lot of people like to work. You might have some loops, you might have some one shots, you might have some MIDI, and this is why I've chosen this track. So first things first, I need to render all of my instrument tracks to audio. And I'm going to just see, we only have one plugin that's on this track over here. But one thing that I always do when I transform to audio track is I wanna render everything. So any plugins that are helping make up the sound of these virtual instruments, instruments or anything like that, I want to render that into the audio files because an AAF cannot use MIDI. It needs to use audio. So we have to first turn any virtual instruments into audio. Now, the other thing I want to talk about is if there's any audio tracks that have specific plugins that are really, really changing the sound. So for example, this could be something like uh, distortion, saturation. Think of a direct guitar signal with maybe a virtual amp on it or something like that. If I was sending over an AAF, I would want to make sure that I'm sending over something that has any relevant effects that are already rendered into place. Okay, so I can see that we only have one track. Now I'm going to open open this up. I can't recall if I bought this or if it was free, but this is something that was on the track when I got it. So let me have a listen. Okay. That sounds like it's doing something quite a lot. Let me. Okay. So that's definitely adding some crispiness. I want to transform this to rendered audio. What this will do is it's going to transform any plugins and it'll also transform any event gain and any fader levels. And then when we're done, we will basically end up with this. This is the transformed version. Okay, so this is now in place. Okay, so the only other thing that I might consider doing is we have a shimmer verb, which is only being used on these guitars. So you know what? I want this to be really, really complete. I'm going to go to song and export stems. And I just want to export the channel of the shimmer verb. And the most important thing here is import to track because I want this to be part of the AAF export. Okay, so that's it. That's all the preparation that we had to do. Any files have been rendered in place that have that where we have effects that we wanna be part of the actual sound. The other thing I wanna point out here really, really quickly is if we take a look at these files, for example, take note that some of these files have event gain. This one is like minus six. It doesn't matter what the event gain is, but this is really, really important because this will dictate whether the AAF gets put back together properly. And this is something that Studio One does really well. It makes sure that any event gain translates into the AAF. So from here, how do we do it? File, save as. We wanna go to the bottom here and choose AAF. Now I'm gonna choose a folder. I always make my AAF the same name as the song. Let's choose save and we'll choose AAF format. These are the magic settings. Embed audio, split stereo tracks, convert audio files. You wanna choose one file format for everything. So that could be WAV 2448 for me. It can be whatever you want it to be. I'm not going to trim any audio files. I want everything to come over and I'm gonna to choose to export pan and click okay. Studio One is now creating one AAF file. It's an encapsulated file. So you could drop this on a thumb drive, you could upload this to Dropbox, you could send this to somebody, and that one file has everything that Pro Tools needs to put back together this Studio One song in Pro Tools. So I'm going to open up a Finder window. Let me hop over here, and I'm going to right click, and we will choose Open with Pro Tools. I'll just put this on my desktop in the default spot. 
Pro Tools is going to put back together this AAF and it's going to put it back together and you're going to see that everything that we had in Studio One has been retained. So Pro Tools is building these WAV files over here. Let me just try to click one of these and kind of zoom into view. And you can see that fades are intact and all of these one shots are intact. And if we were to play this back right now, essentially it is going to sound exactly like it did in Studio One. So if we go back to the very beginning, it's the same song. If I go to one of these parts over here, we're listening to the same thing. If I move back into Studio One and we go back here, it's the exact same. Now, the last thing that I really want to come over is we have spent all this time to put together our markers or our ranger tracks. Also, in this case, it's only a static BPM, but in some cases you might have tempo changes, time signature changes. I want that to come over as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna create a blank instrument track and I'm gonna drag this MIDI down here because it's the full duration of the song. That means that I can basically embed the tempo map and the markers in this MIDI file. Now, in order to do that, we go File, we go to Save As, and I'm going to come down here and choose .mid. Now, I want this to be in the same folder, same name, and we will click Save, and we'll choose Use MIDI File Format. Now, I'm going to come back into Pro Tools, and in Pro Tools, we're going to go File, Import, MIDI. I'm going to choose that MIDI file, click Open, and I'll choose all these options. And now you can see that our markers have come across as well. So if I open my marker track and I go to the pickup, I don't need this MIDI file anymore though. So we can actually delete that. Let's get rid of this and we'll click delete. Perfect. So now I can come to these sections. And now we have everything that made up this song. Now, a couple points I wanna make note of really, really quickly. Let's hop over to this track over here. This is the, the one shots that were literally laid in of, I believe it's a hi-hat. Let's set our, we're set to bars here and we're set to uh, samples. Let's take a look, let's tab over and let's take a look at some of these region boundaries and compare them to Studio One. So if I come in here, we're in seconds, let's go to samples. You can see 1958, 400. We'll go back over to Pro Tools, 1958, 400. Maybe I'll move over to a different section. Where are we here? Uh, we are at the pre-chorus. So if I go to the pre-chorus, this is at 576. We hop back over to Studio One and we want, I think it's this one over here. We zoom in, I select this. This is again 576. So this is sample accurate. And also, if we take a look at the event gain for some of these files, let me go to one specific loop that I know we had some clip gain. Was it over here, I think? So if I was to take a look at this file, you can see that this is set to minus six. So it matches. Now, I don't want anybody to think that this is smoke and mirrors or anything. It, it is not by any means. It's just a matter of, of setting this up properly. And if you do set it up properly, and you obviously render your virtual instruments into audio, any audio tracks that have a specific sound, like direct guitars with a virtual guitar amp, you would want to transform that to rendered audio. As long as you follow these rules, you are going to be able to open up your Studio One songs in Pro Tools in a matter of seconds complete with a tempo map and markers and everything you need. The only one caveat, and this is part of the AAF workflow, and it has nothing really to do with Studio One or I suppose, or Pro Tools, is that in order for things to work, a lot of the times they will split stereo files up into dual mono. This is just it's a legacy thing. It's always been that way. There was a point when Pro Tools was able to take stereo files with AAFs, but it kind of broke and then they fixed it and it broke. So what you need to do if you want it to be a perfect one-to-one -one is that essentially you would have to create a stereo track in Pro Tools. There we go, stereo audio track. And then you could just take both of these and just drag them down to the stereo track. I would borrow the track name from this then at this point, you could either delete or you could hide these and make them inactive. But now you have a stereo track instead of dual mono. But at the end of the day, any files that are sitting in the Pro Tools timeline as dual mono that are panned out hard left and hard right, they will play exactly as they should.
So that is sending over a Studio One production to Pro Tools, complete with sample accurate audio and a tempo map that includes any time signature changes, any tempo changes, and obviously we want our markers to come across. That's all the time I have available for today. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Any questions or comments, leave them down below. I'll do my absolute best to get back to you. And as always, we will catch you in the next video. Cheers.